Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Making a House a Home with myself, Raghad Bakar, and our expert life coach and NLP practitioner, Fahima Muhammad, who today will be talking about the impact of lies, deceit, and betrayal. Assalamu alaikum, Fahima. Alaikum, salam. Thank you for being here today once again. Very welcome. Um, and can you tell us uh, what you mean by the impact uh, of lies, deceit, and betrayal? Well, um, Generally, I would say in any religion, just to live without conforming to any belief system mm -hmm. or conforming to any system that you know exists now, lies, betrayal, and deceit is something that we don't want to experience, nor do we want you know to have that impact on us because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's just morally something that you know in the long term or in the short term, it does have really negative effects. Mm. And when someone lies, when someone cheats, when someone, you know, goes against their word, then there are huge, huge impact on, you know, what comes after. So generally we have to understand that we lie to ourselves all the time first, and that's where it comes from. We lie about our aspirations, our goals, our ambitions, and we lie mainly to uphold our um, general ideals in life. We lie because of some of our choices we make. And also we lie because we sort of want to keep up with what people want us to be. So, you know, there's social pressures and we sometimes don't even realize that we're lying to ourselves, but it becomes the norm because we've created a habit of portraying ourselves in a certain way. So. When it comes to especially romantic relationships, that's when the lies really do come in because we lie about why we've chosen the relationship, why we're in the relationship, because there's a fear of um, abandonment, there's fear of loneliness, there's fear of you know what the cultural norms are or what people think that it should be. And that's where most betrayal, deceit and lies sort of, you know, come from in those sort of, you know, relationships, especially romantic relationships. But um, at the core, we lie to ourselves and we lie to ourselves because psychologically we cannot really have the strength to accept the truth or deal with what the consequences of the truth is. So we have to know how we think as humans, why we say certain things, why we do certain things and the choices we make mm. and how much of that is truth, how much of that is real. And is it for ourselves or are we saying and doing things because of somebody else? And a lot of the time in society, we actually are just trying to give an image or present ourselves in a certain way in certain situations. And sometimes, you know, it's not about lying, but we do have to play different roles in certain circumstances when we're at work, when we're with our families, but we don't need to lie. And that's where people get confused. And that's when people you find that there's deceit and there's betrayal mm. because they confuse it. They confuse the fact that they have to be different people at different times um, without hurting someone. So for example, in business, a lot of people feel that, you know, they have to exaggerate certain things and they lie, mm. you know, in order to get ahead or in order to sort of like give themselves an image which is more than what they truly are. The funny thing is, now you're saying that in business, um, Nowadays, it's not really called lies, is it? It's called uh, sa sales, sa yes. selling, or making good business, or being a good business uh, p person. So they don't really call it lies anymore, do they? It doesn't matter what you call it. What's truth is truth, and what mm. lies is lies. Mm. And when you know over time and over history, and if you look back in anything, whatever is the truth always lasts longer, and the lies always come out. No matter how mm. much you try and hide it, no matter how much you hold it in, if it, even if you don't speak to anyone about it and you're so good at keeping a secret because normally lies do come out because someone else has you know, been told and then it's been exposed, but actually it eats away at yourself. People don't realize that mm. the damage it causes to yourself and even at the beginning you might not have that conscious, but it does affect you and it affects your, you know, your close relationships and your family members. You <coughs> might think, oh, I've gotten away with this lie, but at the end of the day, um, we live in a world where, I know the word is not necessarily liked, but you know, there is such a thing as karma. 
And if it doesn't affect you directly, it comes to your children, it comes to your family members, and you think, oh, why is my life this way? Or why is things not working out for me? Or why is this person that's so close to me, that's trying so hard and, you know, I'm doing well, but it's your lies that's damaging them. Mm. It's your betrayal, it's your choices. And we just don't see that impact. We don't see how it really affects everyone else around and the environment and society. And it might not be straight away, but over time, it, everything catches up with you. Everything, everything catches yeah. up with you. I think a lot of people who are lying or deceive, deceiving someone are more concerned about getting away with the lie or getting away with the deception rather than thinking about the consequences it may have or what's, what, what effects it's going to have on their children or their family. So it's all about um, actually getting away with, uh, with the lie. I mean, as adults, um, we mostly lie about how psychologically painful realities are that we've experienced. So maybe as a child, we came from a single parent and we saw our dad walk away. And at the same time, we might look at it as something that it's normal. So we do the same thing. Okay. And to begin with, we might say, oh, we'll never do that. But then we end up, yeah, yeah, we lie to ourselves mm -hmm. thinking it's okay because we look up to that person still. Mm -hmm. But then we might end up doing the same thing, if not worse. Mm. And then we compare ourselves to them, saying that, oh, well, we, we're still better. When actually, when you want to be better, you don't compare yourself to someone smaller or less. That's you compare what you yourself. mentioned last week, yes. wasn't it? Yeah, you compare yourself comparison. to someone higher. Mm. So, you know, you need to be very aware of, you know, how your childhood psychology has affected you as an adult. And that's why people, even at ages of 30, 40 now, are only learning about commitment, about compassion, about, you know, unconditional love because they never had it when they were younger and they mm. were, you know, taught it. So, you know, and then lies, you know, are in your head constantly because we're not dealing with our own misconceptions and we're constantly lying to ourselves. But the thing is, people don't realize that it shows in your nonverbal communication it shows in your eyes, it shows in your tone, it shows in your language, it shows even in your experience in life, You're constantly chasing, constantly doing something, constantly saying, this is going to happen, or I'm chasing this dream, or I'm going for that deal, or I'm doing this and that. Nothing works out. So those lies affect you. Yes, we have freedom of choices, but those choices have consequences. So never forget that. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing. And even our own childhood experiences has effect on us because if, for example, we were teased when we were younger and, you know, we might be a little bit overweight. So that mm. can also make us feel differently about ourselves. Mm. And we might lie about, you know, how much we're eating mm. and then it shows on our bodies that actually it isn't that. Mm. So there's a lot of things that we need to worry about and think about when we are young. There are psychological theories of human nature that can help us understand um, our self-deception. And as we know the famous Sigmund Freud, he basically describes us as lying through our egos, uh, which is like a defense mechanism. So we sort of like make excuses for our lies and our deceit. And one of them is denial. So we refuse to believe something is true even mm. though it is true. And then there's also rationalization. So we'll give ourselves excuses. Oh, we had to, you know, cheat on her because at the end of the day, you know, she just couldn't. She wasn't good enough. She wasn't she good wasn't enough. Good, yeah, yeah. You know, at the end of the day. It's their fault, not mine. It's not. Cheating. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And there's projection as well mm -hmm. where, you know, we say that it's, it, it exists in someone else and not in me. So at the end of the day, you know, it wasn't my fault. And it was, I couldn't help myself because it was mm. something that, you know, it was just a response and a reaction. Yeah. So when he, said it, when he said it exists in someone else and not myself, like, could that mean, some for the, for the example that you chose, cheating, mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'm not a cheater. I'm doing this because that person is pushing me towards yeah. it. Yeah. So that's what, what you mean. Yes, mm. exactly. Mm. So there's a lot of psychological theories behind lies, deception, and betrayal. Mm. And there's also um, uh, emotional reasoning. So, you know, feeling that basically I had to do something because at the end of the day, I had no choice. Mm. Because again, it's like putting blame on someone else. Or giving yourself excuses. Giving yourself excuses. And then mm. we generally overgeneralize. Mm. Like if we were dieting, for example, you know, I'm either going to have no biscuits for today or just one. Okay. 
but then if you have just the one it's like well I've just had one now so I might as well forget the diet mm. so we give ourselves excuses all the yeah. time we lie to ourselves mm. and we mm. overgeneralize and we also feel that you know we can just get away with it because we're not putting the responsibility on ourselves and people say well I forgive myself and I am you know taking full responsibility now it's your turn to take responsibility the fact that you're saying someone else needs to take responsibility shows that you're not taking 100 percent responsibility because mm. that's not your job mm. each one is accountable for themselves that's why even in our religion in islam when we are faced you know with allah in the day of judgment we're not there holding our parents hand holding our children's hand holding our spouse's hand or anyone for that matter to say well it was their fault or it was this reasoning it was my upbringing it was this Allah well, doesn't make us have those excuses you know we are given free choice and we have mm -hmm. been encouraged to have knowledge and seek sort of you know more knowledge mm -hmm. in order for us to make the right choices mm -hmm. and there's no excuses and we are given chances over and over again so we're not supposed to be labeled for it either but at the same time that's what's taking full responsibility. Mm -hmm. There is an absolutely no excuse for your choice. You do it because you want to. You do it because it's all about you. Mm -hmm. And the other person shouldn't feel guilty, feel bad, or take it personal for someone else's lies, betrayal, or deceit. It's because the other person's imbalanced in their psychology. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do with you. And if people realize that in relationships, then hopefully they'll get over it a lot quicker when they are being lied to, when they're being betrayed, because it's not about you. Mm -hmm. It's about them. If that person's right and good and strong psychologically, then, you know, whether that person is, you know, right or wrong for them for that moment and people change over time, they get fat, they get thin, you know, they have two different stages, they have their moods, they get anger, you know, especially in relationships, everything is experienced. Everything changes. I mean, like everything said, changes. even mood because that's like sometimes like you go through a time in your life when you're very, very down because of the situations that are around you. Of course. And sometimes you're a much happier yeah. and uh, exactly. better person to be around. Yeah, and then so people can get ill. Change. People can even, yeah. you know, they have like, I don't know, life-changing uh, mm. accidents. Yeah. So is that person just going to walk away and abandon you mm. and betray you and not stick to their word and not their commitment? So there's absolutely no excuse because there's people that do stick around even in those bad times. Of course. So the people that walk away, they only hurt themselves <coughs> and more importantly, they actually hurt the people around them and the environment and especially if you're in a family and if you, and if you lie and cheat to your own, for example, people that trust you and that you are responsible for, then that has got nothing to do with the other person. It's definitely to do with the person that's lying. It's definitely to do with the person that's cheating. And betrayal mm. is it's an ugly ugly trait yeah in any respect um you mentioned uh you hurting yourself when you portray someone or you like someone um i think that really um that really does make a lot of sense because uh, subhanallah when you do hurt someone when you lie to someone at the time like i said earlier uh, you know you just you're just worrying about getting away with it yes but later on the the guilt which most people do have to go through at some of point course. will just eat them up Absolutely. I mean, always think about um, when you're hurting someone or when you're betraying someone, always think about how are you going to feel about that. Maybe one year later, maybe even two years later, but you will, you will feel that pain. The thing is, people don't realize that when they are lying and cheating, mm. it is something that you are betraying that commitment, that promise, that trust that someone else is, you know, holding value to. You know, you've given your word or you've made a commitment and for you to lie and, you know, deceive somebody, it just is so ugly for yourself that you actually destroy yourself even for your own future. And anything that comes your way, you sometimes don't even see the goodness. And you might say, oh, I forgive myself, I've moved on, or, you know, I'm not labeling myself. But if you're any decent human being, that will eat away with you because how can you see yourself hurt people and people normally hurt and lie and this comes about the whole idea of lies betrayal and deceit mm. is because you do it to the ones that you're closest to of course you know it doesn't matter so much though when it's people that you don't know but that feeling of betrayal and deceit is when you're doing it to someone that you're close to and when you're doing it to someone that you're close to and if other people see that you're doing it to someone that you're close to what sort of you know trust is there going to be for you in the future or what sort of like, you know, I know even of a story that a really successful businessman will not employ anyone as his business partner unless they have a really good relationship with their own wives. Because if you can keep it really good at home, 
that is a that's definitely something achievement. an achievement <laughs> yeah so it's like i want to work with that yeah. person yeah. i want to you know i can trust that person because even through anything in life they're putting someone else first yeah that business will come that business deal will never close that door will always open because you're keeping your family and the, your loved ones your friends your colleagues happy and sometimes we're like, well, I need to be selfish. Like the modern way of thinking, especially in business, I need to be selfish to get ahead in life. You're not going to get ahead in life. It's not mm -hmm. going to work for you. As much as you think that, and our religion definitely says, the only way to go forward is to put someone else first. And if you can't put your own family first, you're definitely not going to go ahead first. And you can try as much as you want and knock on every door that you want to. It doesn't work like that. You cannot betray people. You cannot lie and cheat on them thinking that you're going to go ahead. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. And if only people could see that, then, you know, this world would be so much better. Even if you read like self-development, self-help books, which is nothing to do with religion. The one thing that's always stated that's the highest level of self-actualization actual, you know, or self-achievement or self-development is when you put someone else first. And in any relationship, whether it's romantic, whether it's in a family, whether it's friendship, your siblings, your parents, colleagues whatever it may be you put them first subhanallah everything happens for you as well basically don't put yourself yes. first yes absolutely mm. so but when you're lying and when you're cheating it's you're selfish as well mm. you're putting yourself first and you're not even caring about the other yeah. person's feelings but sometimes we just said that about when you're lying and cheating you're putting yourself first um, sometimes people will give themselves the excuse that um, I have to lie and I have to uh, cheat or whatever it is um, to not hurt to the other cover, person to cover and not hurt the other person apparently they're not being uh, they're not being selfish they're being selfless so wh what are your well, thoughts on that? well that's a short term view to sort of you know obviously comfort yourself in the moment as well mm. but eventually as we all know mm. the truth is always yeah. out there and you have to sit in your own home and the truth comes to yeah. your door if you're a good person yeah because a lot of people say oh I, I won't tell my mom this or I won't yes. tell my wife this or my husband because it will hurt them so I'd rather just just lie and cover it up and it because I love them so out. much just because I love them so yeah, much it always I mean but the lies <coughs> doesn't have to be a betrayal like or a cheating it could be where you want to save them from pain white lies white example, lies yeah but in the end mm. even those come back to you and they actually come back to actually harm you because those people that are being lied to they feel cheated on they feel mm. the fact that why didn't you tell me this earlier why don't you mm. say this to me? Because I can't handle it. And mm. we can do it in the right way. And we can open it up in the right way. I know timing is everything. And we can't say everything and be all black and white. But the truth always comes out. Eventually, the mm. truth always comes out. Okay. Um, and now that we've mentioned white lies, um, as a life coach, um, and you, you know, you see a lot of families, um, as a child, the first thing you are being taught by your parents to a certain extent can be called white lies. For example, t tooth fairy. For example, some people have Santa Claus or mm -hmm. you know other figures. These are white lies. And the, the, as soon as the child is old enough to understand that there's no such thing, I think it's his first um, encounter with, with lying or white lies. What's your thought on that? That's very interesting. And to be honest, speaking to a lot of children <coughs> and speaking to a lot of families and knowing what the responses are, when a child is now being asked, for example, now that you know the truth about the tooth fairy not being real and it's your mom and dad that's putting it in there, they don't actually view that as being lied to. Mm. So when children have been interviewed and they have been ta spoken to, it's more about you, know, you encouraging a fantasy or a hope or bringing about you know, something that is a fairy tale. And at that age, you know, it's not really harmful. It's not really lies. It's just about you know, blowing up the imagination and you know, making it seem. And but on the other hand, you know, why even do that yeah. if you don't need to? Because it isn't the truth. And it's deception as well. It's, it is perception. But it it's, it's, it's lovely. It's, it's lovely. But it is, it is lovely. deception. Okay, the tooth fairy put the money in for you. I mean, I don't know. I mean, kids nowadays are growing up knowing a lot more about what's reality yeah. and not. And actually, those sort of things you cannot even do and say as much as probably, you know, 10, even 15, 20 years mm. ago. Because everything is so open and knowledge and information is so out there that even other kids in the class were like, no, that's not real. I know, mm. I've seen my mum and dad do it. They're so yeah. clever. But they, they actually... all the siblings <laughs> as well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They do say it. And it's not really that harmful in some, s in some you know, aspects, especially when it comes to that, because we have the miracle of, you know, of our creator. And it's not seen, it's not heard. And there's so many things that are undiscovered. 
that mm. still can be discovered. And we might look at it as not reality and not, you know, facing the truth, but it can be discovered later on, you know. So like in the sea, for example, there's so many things that are being discovered in this earth, you know, with this, every time I put on the Discovery Channel, I see a new species of some sort of animal, which I've never known in, you know, in all my years, mm -hmm. I'm still seeing different things that are being discovered. So it's about you reframing things in, the, in a very clever, smart way with them. And if mm. they ask you the truth of, is it really existing? Say, well, what would it that you like to give it a story and a meaning? So you can ask them. So in a way you, you hand it over to them and you give them the responsibility, mm. even at a young age to say that, well, I want to believe in the fairy tale. So yes, it does exist. And some mm. kids really want that. I want to believe in fairies and, and they take it upon themselves and eventually they come out of it and they learn it themselves. And there's not real harm and they don't look at it as lies. But if you want to be like more honest about everything, then I think with certain timing and ages and stages, there's no harm in that too. Yeah, no, there is no harm. I mean, we all, we've all done it, even myself, yes. to the truth. Yes. Things like that. But I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking out loud, really, like we talk about lies. Is, it, is that the first encounter with, with It depends with on what it is, honestly. I mean, <coughs> if you were to lie to your child about them being, for example, adopted, and even that has the different stages, but sometimes mm. if they don't understand it, but they have actually heard it, but comes to terms with it later on when there's deeper understanding, but it's not a shock, then that could be something even you would say, well, it's better to be open and honest because later on it could have a much deeper, more meaningful impact. Mm. So it depends on your situation. It depends how you raise them, how much closeness you have with your kids because you really have to be very, very, you know, honest about things. But at the same time, you've got to be knowing that you have to have that personal contact with them to see that if it does affect them, you're going to pick up on it and deal with it there and mm. then. So there are, depend it is, depends on what it is. There are people say, well, I'm not hurting anyone. For that moment, you're not hurting someone. But later on, you might be hurting them by not telling them the truth. And it depends on what that, that whatever story you're saying, you know, is. Mm. So all that really makes a difference. So we need to take responsibility about ourselves and how we are with ourselves and then how we can hurt others through mm. these lies. And the first step is self-awareness. And we need to become observers of ourselves, which is very hard to do because all we do nowadays is look at other people and observe them just to make ourselves feel good. Mm. And oh yeah, we're not just as bad. Anyway, so I think in order to be more self-aware is to pause mm. every moment you think every moment you speak every moment that you say something take that awareness and pause and that becomes a habit that you can create so that before saying that lie before saying and doing something you know you might actually give yourself a chance to realize actually what are the consequences because as much as there's choice it follows with consequences mm. So be aware of that. Okay. Well, ultimately, um, <coughs> Allah's made lying haram for a reason. Absolutely. And that's because it affects you um, and affects those around you um, in a very bad way. So, inshallah, um, we can try our best to be as honest um, and as open with those around us. And inshallah, that will in turn affect us and our conscious um, in the future um, we're going to take a break now inshallah and after the break we'll be taking some of your questions and back soon <laughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Making a House a Home. We're back with some of your questions. Um, Fahima, I uh, have a question from Hassan um, and he asks, how can one stop lying in business as sometimes it becomes the only way to get ahead and achieve success? You know, business is something that we all aspire to be way on top and we all want success and there are various means and ways of getting there and I think as humans we do generalize in order to make ourselves move forward and that you know lying and cheating and isn't the only way for success in fact you might look at it as success but it only is short-term it's short-lived 
because in the long term when you do lie and you do deceit and and deceive people it always comes back to you and the effects are much more long term sometimes it might take longer for you to succeed in business and to get that deal because you are being truthful and you're working harder and you're striving and that actually builds something for a much longer period of time and people don't see it like that because even in the Quran you know we are told so many times that you know not to lie not to cheat and you know it's the worst form of hypocrisy I mean what sort of word are you taking over you know Allah's word is the final and it's the most obviously the ones that we have to so what exactly are you you know who are you following so we need to know where we come from and who we are and sometimes it's the hard road it's the ones that takes a bit of time and it's a bit longer but whether it's business or relationships or anything we don't need to lie we don't need to cheat and that way of thinking that way of living needs to be analyzed because the reason why society sometimes you know not everyone because I'm not going to generalize there are very successful businesses out there but the big big businesses even that are like you know the top 500 have even gone bust because you know they don't even perform in the right way they've been lying and they've been cheating so something and someone that big can fall you telling me that you know if you're gonna lie and cheat in your business it's not gonna come back to you it all comes back to you again like we said mm -hmm. there's always an impact and we know Allah has warned us of the impact of lying and cheating and being unfaithful and betraying and it doesn't do anyone any good mm -hmm. and you do not get away with it so it's better to do things the honest way it might be the hard way but in the long term it is the best way and that would be the achievement not just for your generation that's when generations carry on and move forward with success is because it's done in the right way and can I just bring that back to what you said earlier about lying to ourselves so I from what I read fr from him having to lie about his business to get forward um, would that mean maybe he's lying to himself about how successful his business is in the first place because the fact that he has to lie to others for his business to go ahead there must be something wrong yeah exactly there's always an analysis there yeah. to that you know you cannot be truthful and open about mm. yourself that's why you have to lie to others mm. so yeah he you know there is definitely something not quite right mm. even within yourself or within your business for you to actually lie and again it okay. comes back mm. and people always see the truth in the end okay uh, another question from Sumaya and uh, she asks, what is the best way to teach your children not to lie? Because they do it innocently sometimes to avoid getting into trouble. But that can lead them to lying about bigger, more serious issue issues in the future. Well, firstly, you have to know how to... Um, I don't like the word punish and getting them into trouble. The thing is, you have to use the li right language with children when you're trying to teach them. So you got to tell them that whenever they do something wrong or, you know, that's not correct, you don't say bad as well. You don't use negative words like that so that they don't actually think and, you know, feel that, you know, they are bad and they are wrong. You don't make them wrong. Everything in life is a learning and you've got to teach your children that they're going to make constant mistakes and there's consequences for those mistakes and the consequences of doing something that most of the time they know they shouldn't be doing, you know, is probably taking away the TV or their DS, PSP, whatever it may be. And the fact that if they lie about it, then it also catches up with them. And parents need to be smarter. They need to keep up with, you know, what the children are doing so they can outsmart them and know that if they are lying and if they're doing something, they can catch them out in a, in a, in a nice way, but to show them that actually you cannot lie you know especially when they're young you, you can do that quite out. easily they can always get caught out okay. and you can question them quite you know easily you know if you're a bit creative and you know innovate basically about how you you know question them mm. and coaching parents like I will talk to parents and you know support them to be coaching parents so that they have the right questions for their children because a lot of the times they're like well children don't talk because you're not asking them the right questions or there's not a way on which you're asking them to make them want to be open. Mm. So when they feel they're in trouble, it's what is your response? You know, you have to know that whatever they've done wrong is not a bad thing. It's because they just don't know that there's a better way mm -hmm. or that whatever they've done wrong, there is an impact and there's a consequence. And what is that impact? You've got to explain. This is a learning. 
Whatever I'm taking away from you is a learning. It's not even a punishment. It's a reflection. If you say, oh, you're going to stand in that corner for 10 minutes, don't say it's the naughty corner. Don't name it that. Don't label it that. Say it's time for reflection. Thinking corner. Thinking corner, mm -hmm. reflection, whichever it may be, for you to think about what you did and even ask them, why is it that you think that what you've done is wrong or you know that you think that you've upset me or that you shouldn't have done it? And what, you know, what is it that you would do? Or would you like someone else to do it? How would you feel? All these things come into play. So I find that when parents, you know, take it upon themselves to seek therapy, like life coaching, um, not that it is therapy as such, but, you know, I do therapy too. Um, when they become coaching parents, it is really powerful. And children tend to not want to lie because they know that they need to be honest because in the end that's the only way that's going to go forward okay um <clears throat> farah asks when someone very close to you has lied and betrayed you in the past how can you overcome this and trust them again whether it's friendships relationships you know um in any form that's the one thing that when someone betrays your trust and lies to you it's very difficult um, to actually gain that again because that experience it's like a broken glass you cannot put it back together again mm. but then there's a old Japanese saying to say that those pieces can be put back with gold and they can look even more beautiful it's the way in which you see it if you really love that person and you want them in your life still you can just create new experiences and people cannot be labeled for their mistakes even if they lie and cheat we all are human and we're all on our own journey and mm. we all are going to make mistakes and sometimes those mistakes makes us to be a lot better so don't ever think that a person who's lied or cheated, you know, that's it, they're done for life. They've gone through whatever they've gone through in their life. Maybe they didn't have the role models. Maybe they didn't have the right upbringing. Their psychology is messed up because of, you know, whatever they had to experience. So you can, you know, you can empathize with that. But if you really love them, then you create a new way of thinking and being with them. And it does take time. Time is a huge healer. And I know it's a cliche, but it does work. And if you do feel for that person in any form, whether it's a friend or a romantic relationship or, you know, a colleague or whatever it may be, a family member, these challenges we face in our households all the time when someone betrays us and lies or, you know, says something. And it, it can just create a different person within you thinking that, oh, I can never be free now to trust again, not just that person who's lied to you, but even the world around you. But don't generalize and don't look at it like that. You can be more aware, like sometimes you might think that, you know, I'm maybe too trusting or I just take people's word for what it is. But there's nothing wrong in that. You might say, well, I'm just going to constantly be hurt now because, you know, I'm the kind of person that trusts and believe and now I'm never going to believe. Again, there's a, yeah. there's, a, there's a balance that you need to have. Yeah, that's not always actually a bad trait. The fact that you're exactly. very trusting and you do believe people is a reflection upon you. Yes, how because you are. Because you're not, you're not a person who doesn't lie and you're a person who doesn't exactly. betray um, and you're very trustworthy. trustworthy. So that's what makes you yeah. more trusting because it's just a of reflection course. of you. And of it's the opposite as well. People who be. never believe, they believe others and people who are always suspicious of others, it's just, again, a reflection of themselves because they probably, the way they behave, the way they think yes. is, is uh, not to be trusted. And of course, we expect Allah <coughs> to forgive us. How many mistakes do we make? How many lies do we tell ourselves and other people? So if we expect that to be, you know, we need to be that. We need to be a reflection of what we expect. Mm. And we do need to give people second chances, even third and fourth chances. You know, people are, are going to also change their ways, knowing that someone actually believes in me, even though I've made a mistake. Someone actually trusts me, even though I, I betrayed their trust. You can change that person to be good. So it's not just about you. Mm. So continue to be the person that you are, always trusting. You be the reflection of who you want to see in others. Mm. And you might just be that change that they need. And I know it's difficult and it does take time, but it's possible. And I think there's only goodness that comes out of goodness. There's only positivity that comes out of positivity. Don't look down on anyone. And don't mm -hmm. judge anyone for whatever they've done. And don't, you don't need to call them out or you don't need to do anything. Just be supportive and be that friend or the partner that, you know, that needs to be. And the trust will come back again because everyone goes through different phases in their life. 
So we cannot just think that, oh, you know, it's happened to them and they've lied and they've cheated. It can happen to you. You might be in a position where you find yourself in that situation mm -hmm. where you're going to have to be the same way. And you want someone to give you that second chance. Uh, Kothar asks, I know that my friend lies a lot about certain things and I do ignore it mo most of the time. But sometimes I call her out on it because it annoys me as she's obsessed about portraying herself in a certain way. So, for example, she can't say no but will lie and make up a story so it looks like she has no choice but it's always a lie what can i do to help make to help what can i do to help and make her change it's very difficult to change people and you only have control over yourself um, if you're a close enough friend you know having a conversation with her you know constantly and just talking generally about you know if you feel that it is something that's annoying you but it's difficult, it's really difficult. Everyone has their own way of looking at life. And unless you're a coach or a therapist and to get deep down as to why she is that way, you know, and at the end of the day, this whole topic, it comes down to creating a habit. People have created that habit about lying and having, you know, being seen in a certain way. And obviously it's a lot of the time conforming to society and cult cultural norms. And that's how they see their lives to be. And they don't want to be seen to be bad or saying no or not available, which in an innocent way, it can come across as you being nice because you don't want to say no to somebody. But mm. there are obviously, you know, consequences to that. So you've got to be empathetic that she's probably going through her own things. And unless you're trained to understand where she's coming from and question her in the right way as to why she's so determined to never say no, you know because maybe she's had an experience where she's always been said no to and she doesn't want to give that effect to somebody else mm. or she just wants to be looked at as someone that you know is always there for somebody so she has to make an excuse mm. to say that well it's really not my fault I cannot be there for example but you know something's come up and there's a lie so it's the way you look at it it's the stories we tell ourselves constantly the meanings we give to whatever stories we attach and that creates you know this whole life and living situation that mm. we're in so I wouldn't take it so personal you be honest as a friend about your life and about your things maybe you can have a, a conversation about you know there's no need to impress people mm. you know outside of who you really are talk more generally about being authentic and real and genuine because that's what people appreciate and over time people do see the lies people do see the excuses because you sometimes get so caught up in it you forget and you get caught out on it and that's what happens mm. so it can be more damaging so these yeah. are the things that can be spoken about in general you don't need to be um, hurtful and harsh in, in approaching her you don't need to even call people out people don't want that because I wouldn't want that you wouldn't want that you know you have to think and treat people how you want to be treated okay. and there's a certain way in which you will speak so that sometimes when I talk to people I just talk on a general term because you know that's when they will touch on what they need and they'll take what they need and it doesn't become personal it doesn't become an attack you're not labeling anyone because you honestly don't know so I would just be open about just talking generally about things and having these conversations in general and inshallah you know she will change her ways but I think uh, generally for this topic a lot of people that find themselves lying you know cheating deceitful and be, being betraying you know it's whose word are you listening to you know Allah's word is being truthful keeping to your word keeping to your commitment keeping to your promise these things are so important don't take it for granted I know we change over time and our minds change and our circumstances change but if you're a committed person and you are your word and you become somebody who is that there is more for you and if you are somebody who's going to put someone else first especially your own family you will succeed even more and the doors will open for you even more so without you even knocking on them it will come to you and if there is a problem because just like gambling and you know whatever other addictions you may have lying and cheating is kind of like that and the best way forward is to seek help see a therapist see a counselor see a life coach whoever it may be talk about your situation because it all comes from something and someplace a lot deeper and we're not uh, we're not addressing these issues and if these issues are not being addressed, then there's only more and more people that's going to be hurt. Mm. And the most important thing is that you're going to be hurting yourself. So to improve your life is to be more self-aware. Don't deceive yourself. 
and then you won't deceive others. And seek help if you know that awareness that exists within you. And inshallah, you know, we will create new habits and program our minds and our brains to do something a lot more, you know, knowledgeable in, in the way we live, in the way we, we look at life. And our decisions and our choices will be a lot more wiser and according to the way in which we should be living. Thank you, Fahima. Um, that's all we have time for. Um, and thank you so much for, yet again, a very interesting and insightful and useful uh, show again. You know, you've always, you've always got so much, so much information and it's all been so helpful and interesting and, and uh, it, you know, never fails to amaze me and thank hopefully you. our viewers. Um, we've come to the end of our show today. Insha'Allah, we'll be back next week with more of Fahima and her interesting topics. Thank you very much, Maasarama. If you've been affected by the following topics raised in this episode, please contact your local GP or Fahima Mohammed on coachfm1 at hotmail.com.